The Pacific Island nation of Papua New Guinea looks likely to be the first country in the world to begin the pioneering process of deep sea mining. The PNG government has been working with the Canadian company Nautilus Minerals to mine a hydrothermal vent system that lies 1600 meters below the surface of the Bismarck Sea. The Solwara 1 deep sea mining site is just 30 kilometers from the small isolated communities that live along the central west coast of PNG's New Island province. The PNG government has been consulting local communities and national stakeholders about its plans to manage the development of this new industry. But at the end of the day, me, I'm a Papua New Guinea. Yeah. I belong to this place and I will die and live and die in this place. But while deep sea minerals could provide much needed revenue for several Pacific Island nations, questions remain about the impacts of mining on the marine environment and the many communities that depend on it for their livelihoods. In this short film, we explore how the two Pacific Island nations of Papua New Guinea and Vanuatu are working together with their communities to manage the future opportunities and impacts associated with this emerging industry. We never really pay attention to the sector until when we were put under pressure uh, in 2008 when the uh, production license was granted to Nautilus. So we had to, uh, to, to quickly organize ourselves to, to regulate for offshore mining. Throughout the Pacific, more than 300 exploration licenses for deep sea minerals have already been granted but many Pacific Island countries still lack the policies and regulations that are urgently needed to manage this emerging industry. Countries such as Vanuatu are now undertaking detailed consultation with their communities about the best way to manage the potential opportunities and impacts associated with deep sea mining. The only issue is it's a possible source of revenue for the country and for communities and for development. And that's the only reason this issue is even being discussed. Um, so that's, you know, that, that's the mandate for this consultation happening, is that there is that possibility. The PNG government believes that other Pacific nations could learn valuable lessons from its recent experiences by ensuring that a suitable regulatory framework is in place well in advance of any mining activities. The benefit to other countries is that they can also learn from our mistake, I guess, uh, and, and, and also try to develop their own policies in deep sea minerals and also their legislation so that by the time they're able to implement an offshore project, you know, they have these regulatory frameworks in place uh, to, to actually uh, implement offshore mining projects in their respective countries. Following a request from Pacific leaders, the Secretariat of the Pacific Community started a new project to help island nations to strengthen the management of these valuable deep sea resources. Since 2011, the Pacific Deep Sea Minerals Project, which is managed in collaboration with the European Union, has been helping Pacific nations to develop appropriate national policies and legislation that are based on solid science, wide public consultation and effective regulations. We uh, are really, really um, strict to that and we really want to be sure that they get the best deal they can and if they are not ready to engage with that industry, our advice is that there is no rush. In 2014, after much negotiation, the PNG government decided to take a 15% equity stake in the Nautilus offshore mining operation. Nautilus now estimates that the Solwara 1 project will contribute more than 100 million US dollars to the PNG economy. While PNG's on-land mining industry already contributes up to 70% of the country's export revenues, most of the proceeds from this mining activity goes directly into the central government purse. It's been difficult, particularly uh, when we did a consultation and uh, you have to tell the people that uh, unfortunately in this instance for offshore project, it's the state that owns the waters and owns the minerals. Uh, and there are no landowners with respect to offshore uh, 
uh, projects, mining projects. So it's been a, been a difficult uh, issue that we have dealt with. And uh, uh, as you know that our constitution uh, basically states that the state owns all minerals and all waters in Papua New Guinea. Nautilus says it will also establish a community development fund to meet locally determined priorities such as schools, health clinics and improved roads. But many local community members on the central west coast of New Ireland say they want to see direct employment opportunities generated by the development of local deep sea mineral resources. We are living below poverty line. What we are saying is that, fair enough, if the government has already given the mining license, we want to make sure that we are accorded or we are part and parcel of the entire process. We want to see at least an area within the West Coast where the uh, solo War one developed into a, a township that can be able to give us ease to access services and all these things. The Papua New Guinea government has now designated a coastal area of benefit in an effort to recognize those communities that live on the coastal areas nearest to any offshore mining activities. A clear memorandum of agreement must now be negotiated between the national government, the mining company, the provincial government and local community wards. And the government says this approach will ensure that any investment is used to support the development of major projects that will benefit the entire community. In Vanuatu, the SPC EU Deep Sea Minerals Project has assisted the government to develop a full national consultation process to inform the development of the country's first ever deep sea minerals policy. It's a hard concept to get your head around, you know, mining at the bottom of the ocean. Um, so, yeah, that's why it's good to have those couple of films we have, which actually show the um, you know, the, the arms of the machine picking the stone up and stuff from the bottom. To go down there, they're using robots. And with robots, they've got no common sense. And down there, there are lots of things that, you know, we saw it on the TV, there are little holes or whatever where air is coming out and whatever else. And if we happen to have a power cut up there on the ship, this thing bangs something down there and it erupts. What's going to happen? The churches and, and the National Council of Women have said no to deep sea mining. But uh, I don't take that to mean prospecting. I think prospecting has value for just collecting data about what's down there because we don't have anything. So uh, I think the general position has been that uh, prospecting should continue as a way of just establishing some sort of baselines before we decide what the next step is. The SPC EU Deep Sea Minerals Project has been supporting all Pacific Island countries to ensure that the future management of their deep sea mineral resources is built on greater transparency and stronger public accountability. As a result of this important regional project, it is widely hoped that the small island nations of the Pacific will continue to work collaboratively to manage the emergence of this new global industry on their own terms. We've learned from the Cook Islands what, what they've done in their legislation, uh, which is a good thing. Um, and we are now seeing other countries, Tonga, they are working on this as well. Uh, but they, they, we, we, we still have a lot. Uh, to learn from these countries, but through the DSM project, uh, it will only assist us to, to establish better regulatory framework for DSM activities in our Pacific countries. They can develop their capacity uh, to be sure that they will be able to respond to the emerging challenges associated with that industry. Meanwhile, they can learn from the countries that are more advanced and that, uh, that are going to share also their experiences and probably the lesson learned from that.
Dobi.